Hello, uh, I'm Dvir, and uh, today we're going to talk about ranges. Uh, if you have questions, please approach the mic here so uh, I and everybody else can hear well. Uh, so first, um, some words about me. Uh, I work at Verizon Media. I occasionally speak at uh, our local meetup at Israel, C++. Uh, you can find me uh, as Dvirts at uh, most social media, except for Twitter, where it's uh, Dvirts was taken. And uh, I like uh, going to uh, music concerts. That's where I get all my t-shirts off, uh, except for C++ conferences, maybe. <laughs> uh, the last one being Eric Clapton in uh, last Saturday. I highly recommend it. Um, and uh, that will explain the the pictures you'll see uh, later on. Uh, those are all from uh, concerts I uh, went to. So anyway, uh, I also would like to thank uh, Chris DiBella for helping me uh, prepare my talk and Adish Avit uh, for uh, starting the Cross C++ user user group and also for helping me prepare uh, prepare my talk. All right, so. Uh, what, sh what should we care about uh, ranges? So first, let, let uh, ask ourselves, what is a range? So a range is a sequence of elements between two locations, i and k, which we often denote by the half-open range, i comma k. But uh, if you think about it, um, most um, wh what you do with ranges today is passing them to standard algorithms, of course. And uh, there are uh, several ways that you call uh, standard algorithms. Either you pass a pair of iterators, begin and end, usually, or you pass an iterator in account, or you have this really strange ice cream iterator, and uh, you need to const default construct one in, uh, to, to signal the end of the stream. Okay, so this iterator is not a position in some sequence, but in fact it's a, a predicate wrapped inside an iterator that calls the input stream to check if it's uh, exhausted. Right? So uh, a pair of uh, iterators either cannot model or only models with like strange hex all the use cases we want from ranges. So why not have a single construct to cover them all? And of course, uh, ranges uh, give us this nicer syntax. Instead of passing begin and end, just pass v. So this is also shorter, but it, all, it is also more most safer, right? Because you can't mix and match iterators from different containers by accident. And not just, uh, just that, because having a, a single object that we need to pass to algorithms opens the door to range adapters, which lazily transform the sequence and can be composed in many interesting ways, and we'll talk about that uh, today. So uh, the good news are that you don't have to wait for uh, your compiler to ship a C++ 20 standard library. You can use ranges today with the following libraries. Uh, first, CMCS2, uh, CMCSTL2 by uh, Casey Carter. This is the reference implementation for the standard, and it works only with uh, concept support from the compiler. Uh, NanoRage by Tristan. It's a C++17 implementation of what's in the standard, and has, has a pretty good uh, compiler support. And of course, Range V3, written by Eric Nibbler. Uh, this is what uh, basically started up all the ranges effort. 
It has everything that is in the standard and much, much more, uh, as we'll see today. So I chose to uh, focus on what's in RAID V3 and not just what's in the standard, because why not use it? It gives us more tools. And as uh, Connor sh uh, showed us at uh, the beginning of this week, we need to know uh, what tools we have in our disposal. So in time of need, we'll know what uh, algorithm to choose and uh, what tools we have. So uh, as you might uh, already know, range, uh, range libraries use concepts to constrain the different algorithm they have. So in order to properly use those algorithms, we should familiarize ourselves with the basic concepts. But first, uh, here is a declaration of uh, standard for each from uh, C++ 17 standard library. Uh, does anyone happen to know what is the return type here? No. Marshall? No. Right. Uh, OK, so we have a standard library implementer here. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't know it uh, until I made the slides. And it's, uh, it returns the function you pass into it. Uh, I still don't know why, but. Uh, Yeah. Well, okay, so uh, the, 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah, actually, we'll see there is. But uh, anyway, uh, the, the comment from uh, Marshall uh, was that uh, instead of return ball, why, why not return whatever uh, useful information we have and the function might have state that we want to pass on. OK, but that's not uh, the point I wanted to show you. Um, let's take a closer look at the, this is a conformant, uh, conformant implementation I copied from CPP reference, of course. Uh, let's take a closer look at it. So first, uh, it has it, the first argument, which is called first. This is basically the start of uh, the range we want to work on. And what algorithm is doing is doing with it is to increment it and dereference it on its step, right? So it turns out these are the two basic operations we require uh, that, that that basically uh, we need to uh, to work with the ranges. So this brings us to our first concept, which is called input or output iterator. All right, uh, it was called the iterator uh, in the first step uh, proposals, but uh, it was renamed to not con conflict with the stood uh, iterator class. So as we said, it's, it's a type which can be dereferenced and uh, incremented. And there are uh, many kinds of iterators with additional uh, actions you, ca you can uh, use on. And for example, uh, by directional iterator, you can uh, go back. OK, so that is the uh, iterator concept. Again, if you uh, have questions, please approach the mic. All right. Um, so moving on, uh, the second argument is called last. And this uh, is basically the end of the range. And all the algorithm is doing with it is comparing it to first. That's all. OK? And when the when this compare uh, will return, uh, when, when they will be equal, the, the iterator and the, the start and the, the end iterator, then the range is uh, over and we can return. So that brings up uh, the second uh, concept, sentinels. So uh, this is the, the formal uh, definition of, of the concept. Uh, what it says is that it this is a semi-regular type, S, that uh, S is a sentinel for an iterator i if we can compare them. And if they uh, do not compare equal, then we know we can dereference i and increment it to get closer 
to the sentinel. Okay, so until now, uh, a range was basically a pair of iterators. Now it can be two different types. Can be, not must, but can be. Um, an iterator and a sentinel. And that indeed uh, helps us model the, all the previous use cases we've seen before. Because a pair of iterator, uh, an iterator itself is a, uh, a sentinel, so a pair of iterator can be modeled. Uh, an iterator and a predicate, we can simply uh, have a type that stores the predicate as the sentinel and query the predicate when we call operator equals. And uh, the third one, we can store the count in the iterator and decrement it on each step. And then on the operator equals, check if the count is zero. So finally, now we can define what a range is. This is a type which we can call begin and end on and get an iterator and a sentinel. That's all. And a range i comma s refers to the elements star i, star r plus plus, et cetera, until some iterator j that compare equals to this sentinel. There are other, uh, oh, sorry. Um, so uh, parallel to the different concepts we've seen for uh, iterators, there are uh, concepts for a similar concept for ranges. So uh, basically the, the type of the iterator you get from begin says what concept this range uh, satisfies. And uh, you can see examples here from the standard library. Um, we also have an, an additional concept called common range, uh, which is a range that uh, has, it, its sentinel does have the same type as its uh, iterator. For example, all the standard containers, because they're written uh, for the sentinel concept, so they only have pair of iterators. All right, uh, so there are other uh, useful concepts and uh, callables. A side sentinel is a sentinel which uh, knows its distance from any other iterator in constant time by using operator minus. And a sized range is a range which you can call uh, size on and get the size in constant time. Now this does not necessarily mean, uh, implies that it, the range of, sorry, the sentinel of a sized range is itself a side sentinel. For example, standard list, uh, stores the size inside the list, so you can query the size in constant time, but each point in the list does not know in constant time its distance from any other point, right? Uh, in addition, uh, in any case, whether it's a size range or not, we can call ranges distance to get its size, except it might be a linear uh, complexity for non-sized ranges. We can check if a range is empty, and for contiguous ranges, we can call uh, data and get a pointer to the memory. All right, so these are the con basic concepts. Now we can start uh, talking about algorithms. Okay, this is the most first thing you do when you have a range. Um, and almost all of the algorithms you, you know are uh, supported in range v3. So again, continuing with this uh, for each example, this is the declaration of for each from the C++ 20 working draft. I know it's uh, scary, but let's take it uh, one part at a time. So first we have two overloads, one which takes an iterator and a sentinel, and another one which takes a whole range. Okay, so we still have the option to send an iterator and a sentinel separately. Then we have a constraint function. Okay, don't need to uh, read this, the, 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 the details about the, the, the concept of the function. Just know it's there. And the return type, instead of just being the function, is now a struct called for each result. And here it is. So it has the function called fun. 
And it also has the iterator called in in this case. And so, so what is this iterator, which we didn't have before? So again, what we pass to the algorithm is a sentinel. It's not, it, it, is, it is not necessarily an iterator. So what the algorithm uh, returns us is the end iterator, the iterator that compared equal to the sentinel. Okay, so this is an information we didn't have before, so it may be useful to return it back. Okay, so let's use it. Uh, here I've implemented a poor man's accumulator. So I have a vector with four uh, numbers, zero, two, four, and six. I have uh, my sum, and I call for each with a lambda, which increments the, the sum by the value it gets. So if I call it on my vector, sum will be 12. Okay, and then we take back the iterator and function from this return struct we've seen, and the iterator will point to the end of the vector, and the function is the same function as the lambda, so we can call it again with one, and it will increment sum again by one. Okay, I'm not saying you should write it, like, but I just wanted to show uh, a possible usage. Uh, by the way, all the code samples you'll see today can be found at my GitHub. Uh, they're tested with both Rand v3 and CMCSTL2, whatever uh, is supported there. And the samples assume using namespace ranges, uh, so they fit the slides. Okay, so returning to uh, the declaration of uh, for each, I, non I don't know if anyone of you uh, noticed, but the overload which takes a range does not return for each result of an iterator, but of safe iterator t. Okay, so that's interesting. Why do we need this? So think about uh, this uh, example. You have a function which returns a vector, and you pass it to find, to find the number 42 in this vector. Okay, and find returns an iterator, right? The iterator of the position. But this is an R value container, it, is, it has already been freed. So now you have an invalid iterator to uh, a vector that's not there anymore. So what a safe iterator T gives us is that uh, in cases where, the, uh, where you pass an R value container, it will be an alias of a type called dangling, which is not dereferenceable. De so you, you can't do anything with it, basically. And uh, for L-value vectors, there's no problem. You can dereference the iterator. And indeed, in this case, this, this type will be an alias of the iterator. OK, so uh, range, range libraries have many small safety uh, nice things like this. But Algorithms is not just for each, of course, uh, as uh, Jonathan Bokara mentioned. So to get to know all the algorithms, I really recommend watching this, uh, his talk from last year. Uh, if you're on YouTube, pause now and go watch his talk and then come back. Uh, and there we expose all the world of uh, C++ algorithms. So uh, there are some range algorithms which have not, have not been, uh, are not in the C++ 20 working draft currently. Uh, these are numerics. Okay, all, 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 the, algorith all the algorithms from a numerics header. The parallel uh, algorithms and the algorithms that were uh, added after the range DS uh, was formed. The highlighted ones, are uh, implemented in range v3. All right, so uh, algorithms are uh, pretty nice, but the, the second. But uh, the feature that really excites me in, in the ranges is views. A view is a range that has constant time copy, move, and assignment. So basically, it's a lightweight range which you can pass around by value. For example, a range that 
uh, holds a pair of iterators. You can just copy this pair. A range that holds its, its uh, values by shared pointer. Uh, and the range that generates its elements on the fly, so it has nothing to copy, basically. Most containers are not views, of course, because vector does move its elements around when copied. So it can be a constant time. A viewable range is a range which you can take a view of safely. So either it's already a view or it's an L value container. Again, we don't want to have uh, references to things that will soon be destroyed. Here's an example again from the working draft of uh, a view called empty view. Like any range, it has a begin and end. It is always empty. It's a sized range of size zero, and it's a contiguous range, so it has a data member. For every, uh, for almost every view, there is a utility object called either a factory or an adapter, which uh, generates uh, instances of the respective view. And the, those adapters sit in uh, views namespace, and we'll see examples pretty soon. Views are lazy. They generate their elements on the fly as you iterate over them. Okay, so every time you increment the, uh, an iterator to a view, it will generate a new value. And that's why we can also have views of infinite, infinitely many elements. And we'll see examples. Uh, Again, a quick note, uh, the code samples use this check equal to compare a uh, range and initialize the list. And the views that are in the working draft will be denoted by this C++ logo. Okay, so now we're gonna cover all the views that are in range V3. And I uh, split them into categories, so it will be more easier to digest. This is just my classification but I hope it's enough. Okay, so view's empty. We're all, we've already seen it. It is always empty. View single is a view of a single value. This is actually also a container because it holds the value inside. But since it's only one value, its copy is constant time. Uh, Subrange uh, wraps uh, an iterator and a sentinel in a view. Okay, if you uh, know things like uh, uh, an iterator, uh, a range iterator. So, uh, yeah, so you give it an iterator and a sentinel, and then you can view those elements. Uh, repeat re lazily echoes a given value infinitely many times. So this is the first example of an infinite view. And repeat n does the same exactly n times. Unbounded uh, takes an iterator and generate uh, all the elements starting from this iterator infinitely. And counted, again, does the same for a given number of times. Okay, this is a recurrent, recurrent pattern, having, having an infinite view and a sized view that basically do the same. Now, the infi in infamously um, named uh, IOTA, we also have an, an, an IOTA view. Uh, given one uh, incrementable uh, value, it generates all the... Uh, uh, values by incrementing this value over and over again, infinitely many times. And given two values, it generates the half open range between those values. There's also closed iota, which generates the closed range between the inputs. And now I said that 
IOLA works on any incrementable type. If it's an integral type, then you can si simply call it ints. Just for, uh, to clarify your uh, meaning. And closed IOLA for integral types is called closed indices. And there's also indices, which is all the numbers from zero to the inputs. Okay, so indices of 10 is the numbers from zero to nine. And each of 10 is the numbers from 10 to infinity. So this can be confusing and that, that is why you should pass this unreachable utility when you want the infinite time and overloads. Okay, uh, moving on, linear distribute uh, takes two numbers in account and distribute n values linearly between the edges. And the most general one, generate, takes a function, a nullary function, and calls it to generate its elements. Views on strings, uh, C star takes either a string literal or a constant star and generate the different characters out of it, excluding the null, the null pointer, the null uh, terminator. Uh, tokenize takes a string, a regex, and a group index, and generates all the submatches of this regex from the string. Views on streams. There's an ice stream which takes a stream and reads values of a certain type t out of it. And get lines, reads lines from the stream. Uh, the line separator can be configured. Filters. Uh, filters take a range and lazily generate some of the uh, elements of this range. So first, filter takes a predicate and generates all the elements that satisfy the predicate. And remove if gen uh, generate the element that uh, do not satisfy the predicate. The predicate. These views uh, return uh, elements from the start of the input range. Take and take exactly return the first n elements. The difference is that take exactly is unchecked, so it can be uh, more efficient but uh, also more dangerous in case you pass it uh, a size that is loud, larger than the, the whole range. And uh, take while also takes elements from the start of the range, uh, all consecutive elements that satisfy given predicate. Similarly, you have drop. Uh, this drops elements from the start of the range, so give you the elements from the end, again, for a number of times or for some predicate. The limit uh, takes all the elements from the start of the range until the first occurrence of some delimiter. And sample generates n randomly selected elements in order. Slice uh, is given to offsets to the range and generates the half open range between those offsets. You can also use this end utility to take the offset from the end of the range, as you can see in the last slide. Uh, stride generates every nth element of the input sequence, starting with the first. Unique, uh, these uh, views work on adjacent elements. Unique and adjacent remove if filters out, filter out elements which, satisfy, uh, which are either equal or satisfy some binary predicate. And adjacent filter uh, keeps the element that satisfy the predicate. So if in, in, the, in the example I pass it uh, equal to and not equal to, so these two will have the same uh, result. Okay, because these are opposites. All right, uh, set views. So uh, set, what I mean by set is uh, any ordered sequence. So you can take uh, lazily generate the union, intersection, uh, difference and symmetric difference 
of any two sorted sequences. Now, uh, views which take a single range and generate multiple ranges out of it. Chunk generates contiguous subranges, all of whom have the same size, except for the last. Uh, sliding produces a sliding window with steps of one of a given size over the input range. Uh, these guys uh, split the input range at the occurrences of a given delimiter or at elements satisfying the predicate. And group by groups together consecutive equivalent elements. Now, views that take multiple range, uh, ranges and generate a single range out of them. Concat concatenates the views, at, sorry, concatenates any number of ranges having uh, where, where, where their value type has some common underlying type. Okay, you can mix and match different ranges type in the same range. And join takes a range of ranges and joins them together. And optionally, can push some uh, value or, or range of values between any two consecutive uh, ranges. Cartesian product uh, takes n ranges and generates all, n tuple, all possible n tuples where the first element of the tuple is from the first range, the second from the second range, etc. And zip takes, again, n ranges and generates a range of tuples, but this time the first tuple is the first element of all the ranges, the second is the second element of all the ranges, etc. And zip with starts with a zip and then applies some given uh, NRE function f to all those uh, tuples, reducing the result to a range of values. Transformers are views that uh, change the elements of a given range. Reverse lazily generates the elements in the reverse order. Replace replaces either a single value or elements which satisfy some condition that is replaced uh, with another value. Enumerate generates a range of pairs where the first element is the index of the second element in the source range. Address of produces a range of addresses of the elements of the original range. And conversely, indirect uh, gets a range of the referenceable ele elements and the references them. It is unchecked, so uh, be careful with that. Uh, const underscore produces a const view of some range. And move, like a move iterator, generates a new range of R value references to the original elements. Now, this itself does not move them, but if we pass them this resulting range to copy, for example, it will move the elements out of that source range, right? Because it calls uh, the assignment operator with an R value. All right, uh, elements given a range of tuples and a constant n will generate a sequence of all the elements in the nth position. So uh, for example, we have a map which is basically a range of pairs and we call element zero on it and it will give us the keys and element one will give us the values. And indeed you can use these aliases to get keys and values of a map or any uh, range of this uh, type. And finally, the most general transform gets a unary function and applies it to the elements of the source range. 
All right, uh, there, are, uh, um, there are views that uh, generate uh, ranges with more uh, elements than they got. For example, intersperse pushes a value between any two consecutive elements, and cycle in infinitely repeats the given range. There are also numeric views. Partial sum, this is doing the same as the algorithm with the same name, only lazily. And that is, uh, that is true also for exclusive scan. Remember that we don't have parallel algorithms, so uh, inclusive scan is not uh, required because in a non-parallel case, it's, it is the same as uh, partial sum. Just a side note. There are some utility views. All generates all the elements of it, the input range. This is useful if you get a range and you want to make a view out of it for some reason, for, for, for generic programming, usually. A uh, common gets a range and generates a common range out of it. OK, so as you recall, a common range is a range uh, where the iterator and the sentinel are the same type. And this is useful for calling legacy code, which expects a pair of iterators. And the std function of use, any view, this is a type, type curious view of some type T and some category, which is basically uh, the range concept you uh, expect to store there. Okay, so if you uh, declare an any view which with a category forward, it will only accept forward, ra forward ranges. And up, of course. It will not accept an input range. Okay, like, like most uh, uh, type to rest uh, values, it is useful if you want to, for example, store a view in your type. And finally, uh, you might have uh, heard the term list comprehension or uh, generators from Python and other languages. Now we also have it in C++. And this is surprisingly for each. So what it does, it's a bit complicated. It takes a range and a function which returns ranges. Then it applies the function to each element of the source range to get multiple ranges. And then it joins them together. How is this uh, list comprehension? That's Look at the example. Now this yield there is a utility that uh, is just there to make it look like a generator. But basically all it does is return a single view. Okay, so we have a range of one, zero, one, two, three. And then we co uh, on, for each number, we generate a single view of the square of this number. So now we have four single views of squares. Then we join them together and get a range of the square. Similarly, there's a yield from, which accepts the range and just returns it as is. Again, this is just a syntactic, syntactic sugar. So it will uh, be clear that it, this is like a generator. Uh, okay, so. For the number uh, zero, we call indices of zero, we get an empty range. Then we call indices of one, we get a, a range with, with just zero, then a range with uh, zero and one, and finally zero, one, and two, and we join them together. There are also yield if and lazy yield if, which conditionally generate uh, an output, but I won't go into the more detail today. All right, we've covered all the views of range V3. So as promised, we would like to compose them together. 
Here is some code uh, using classic STL algorithms to computing sum, uh, the sum of all the squares of the numbers from one to count inclusively. So we create a vector, we fill it with iota with the numbers one to count, we call transform to get the squares and then pass it to accumulate to get the sum of the squares. And here is, here is how you would do it with views. So first we need to read it inside out. We call iota one comma count, again to get the number run to the numbers one to count. Then we transform it to be the squares, and the result we pass to accumulate. So this is much shorter than the previous example, but uh, it's a little in, a bit inconvenient to read. Okay, we need to read inside out, and maybe here it's easy, but for complex calculations, it can be it can be much harder. So uh, what uh, we have for this is the pipe operator. The pipe operator enables us to pass a range between the views. So now we can call it from uh, we can read it sorry from uh, left to right as usual. We call iota, we pass the result to transform, and then pass the result of that to accumulate. Note that uh, because the laziness of use, no work is done until you call, you call accumulate. Generating the, the, uh, the generated squares, which is itself a view, will not actually do any work. Only when accumulate will uh, iterate over it, will it generate the results on the fly. All right, so we composed views. Now, uh, there are cases that after doing such a pipeline, you would like to save the result in some container. And you can use uh, this two utility for that. Okay, so it's in the ranges namespace. And uh, this one will uh, generate a vector of ints of what I have calculated here. Note that the element type of the vector is inferred. You, know, you don't need to, to specify it. Okay, so uh, we've covered views. Now for a feature which uh, is not in the working draft at all. Okay, as some of the views are in the working draft, but actions uh, have not uh, been proposed yet. So, what are actions? So we have algorithms which are eager, but don't compose. Okay, we, can, we can't uh, use the pipe operator uh, for, with algorithms, only with views so far. And we have views which are lazy and compose. So we would like to get the best of both worlds, or I don't know if it's the best, but to get uh, eager and composable algorithms. And this is exactly what action, actions give us. So what actions do we have? We have pushback for adding elements to the end of the range. We can add elements to the beginning of the range with push, fr push front. Uh, we can insert uh, elements to the middle of the range and erase elements out of it. We can also sort the range, uh, stable or not, and shuffle it back. And there are more actions. Uh, these actions uh, do the same as the views with the same name. So I want to uh, go over them one by one. And as we said, we can compose actions. So here we have a function to read some data into a vector. 
then we sort it and remove the duplicates. One, uh, basically one liner. Now, uh, actions modify their input. And uh, pipelines work only on R value containers. So if you have an L value, you need to call copy and move before starting the pipeline. So you can copy the vector into the pipeline or move it there if you don't need it anymore. OK, and this is a good thing. It makes you uh, explicit about your intent. And the second case uh, of moving the iterator, uh, if you want to, to write it back to the source iterator, you can use this pipe equal operator as a shortcut. OK. So projections. Okay. I'm only taking a sip for you to take a look at the picture. All right. uh, so I don't know if anyone noticed, but again, here is the declaration of for it from the working draft of C++ 20. And what, what I highlighted uh, here is an additional argument that for each takes, which is called a projection. Why is it useful? Here is a classic struct employee with first and last names. And let's say we have a vector of these employees. And we want to sort the vector by last name. So we call std sort. This is still a classic uh, C17 STL. So we pass begin and end. And then we need a custom comparator to compare the last names. Then we have a sorted vector, and we want to search it with lower bound, which does a binary search. So we want to find Nibbler. We want to find the employee with the last name Nibbler in the list of employees. And again, we only want to compare by last name. So we need to find yet another, we need to define yet another custom uh, comparator. Okay, so we have two uh, pretty similar use cases to compare by left name, but we need to write them uh, twice. And uh, this is basically code duplication, which uh, can get out of sync and cause uh, hard to find bugs. So we would like to avoid that. And projections uh, give us exactly that. So coming back to the implementation of for each, what for each does with the projection is invoke it on the element of the sequence and then pass the result to fun, to the function. So the function will only see the projected value. Now, by default, the projection is just the identity, so it will have no effect. But in our case, we can define a projection called get last name, which, given an employee, returns its, its last name, and then pass the same projection to the two algorithms. OK? These two algorithms will apply this function and will only work on the last name. So sort will sort by last name and also the search. And then we can use the default uh, comparator, which is less. Notice that although sort will sort by last name, it will still move employees around and not strings. OK, so it's up to the implementation of the algorithm to do the right thing, but this is what it does. And also, lower bound will return us a, uh, an iterator to a, an employee but not, and, and not uh, just to, to, to less name. 
Uh, in this case, since we call uh, std invoke to apply the projection, std invoke has a nice uh, property that it can also uh, treat pointer to members as callables. And in this case, since we only compare by a member of our struct, we can simply pass a pointer to the last name, and we don't need to define a separate lambda. And also, uh, we can omit this last because this is the default. So we just need uh, an empty braces. All right. So uh, we saw a couple of useful and nice tools. And you might wonder, does it perform? OK, we have C++ programmers. We care about performance. Maybe all these abstraction layers will hurt our, our performance. So uh, coming back to this sum of square example, I uh, wrote a benchmark comparing this code with the function call syntax of, of use and with the pipe syntax and also the same code with a simple for loop. And this, these are the results. So the classic STL algorithm is uh, pretty bad and all the rest are basically the same. So uh, ranges used can be optimized by the compiler the same as a simple for loop can. So this is just a single benchmark on a single machine, but I do think it shows that useful code, which is also safe and elegant, uh, which is why, which is what the ranges libraries give us, can also be performant code. And with this, I'd like to thank you. Any questions? All right. What do you count, account for in that performance difference at the end? Oh, this is the, because in the classic STL, I use the vector which does, uh, oh, but it's on the mic. Still? Uh, so the question is, why is the difference between the, uh, in the benchmark? And this is because uh, only the STL uh, version uh, allocated memory for the vector, but I didn't see any other way to work with the standard algorithms uh, without allocating this vector. Uh, do you mind jumping back to the slide on samples? Which slide? Uh, sample. A uh, few sample? Yeah. Yeah. Where are those dices? Sorry, relatively big yeah. jump. All right. Um, okay, I thought there was a sample N, so I just missed it. Thank you. Yeah, all right. All right, I have um, two questions. Yeah. First, is there a benefit to using um, projections over just transforming it first? Yes. Uh, so the question was, uh, is there a benefit to use uh, projections instead of transformation, transforming the, the range? And the answer is that if you would transform it to a range of uh, strings, and you saw that that, then the original uh, range of uh, employees would not be sorted. It will only be sorted the transform the range. OK. Yeah. And um, for generate, where that's where it just calls a function over and over again and then creates a. Yeah. Um, is there some way to tell it to stop, to like make the function return something saying to stop, or does it just keep uh, generating? Yeah. So uh, 
I'm just trying to find it, but um, here it is. Um, right. So um, no, and uh, what you should do basically is to uh, use your uh, condition for stopping to filter the range beforehand. So you can. Yeah. So th this is basically what I offer. So first, use take while or filter or whatever to uh, filter the range to only the values you want to work on, and then you can apply generate to all of them. Thank you. Hi. Um, so is the lifetime of the views tied to the actual range? Yes. These uh, are reference types and like yes. iterators. Yeah. So do you see like problems occurring because uh, let's say the range goes out of scope, but um, the view is in scope? Yeah, so, so be, be careful when you store uh, uh, views, like, like any reference type. Um, mostly use them for, for uh, calculating some stuff and then take the result and, and push it back to some vector or something. Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right. So I work in a low latency space. I was wondering if any of the views have any guarantees where, where no dynamic allocation happens. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the question is whether uh, views have a uh, guarantee to not allocate memory. Does anyone know? None of the standard views allocate. Um, a couple of them might cache the interim memory. Yeah, they might have a local uh, stack me um, member, but I don't think any one of them allocates. Thank you. Hi. Um, is it possible to parallelize the, uh, the creation of, of views, or does it run, only run sequentially? Yeah, so uh, this is basically, uh, I believe, uh, what Eric Nibbler is researching now, how to uh, do this in parallel. So uh, this is still an open right, question. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you again.